Hi, everybody, and welcome to Mind Body Green's beauty podcast, Clean Beauty School. I am your host and Mind Body Green's beauty director, Alexandra Engler. On this podcast, we explore beauty through the lens of well being. And on today's episode, I have a very special guest who I am extremely excited to talk to because I have been a long time fan of her products and her entire point of view on beauty and skincare and aging. And I just, you know, I can't wait to learn so much from her. So without further ado, Dr. Barbara Sturm, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me today. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I I mean, like I said, I you are just an icon in the space, and I am so excited to chat with you. And, you know, I, I have a good feeling that most of my listeners know who you are and maybe even know a little bit about your story. But I do always love to start the episode by allowing you to to share your own journey um, and your own experience. So, you know, I want to ask, what was your journey into medicine and specifically beauty? So that's a good question. Um, I definitely didn't start out as a beauty junkie, more as a tomboy. I was climbing trees, playing soccer with the boys. So I did not think I would end up in the beauty space. When I was four, my mom was a lab doctor and she took me to the hospital. I decided to become a doctor and that never really changed. So I studied medicine. I studied sports and I... um, went to um, into the orthopedic field and there I went together with orthopedic scientists but also orthopedic doctors and I helped pioneering a treatment where you take the patient's blood, process it in a certain way, create anti-inflammatory proteins and re-inject those back into the joints to take down inflammation and stop the ongoing aging process. So inflammation aging goes very, very close together. So I was always intrigued with the whole anti-inflammatory science, molecular science, and how inflammation interferes with our health, with our system. And when I started a little later to inject um, Botox and fillers, because that to me was kind of like fun, and I was interested in that field when nobody was doing it at the time, that's 20 years ago, I translated the science from the orthopedics into the skin, and I created something you know, everybody knows as vampire facial or blood facial or PRP. That was my invention 20 years ago because I became such a, you know, scientist and entrepreneur and pioneer at the time because I was like hanging with scientists. You know, when you hang with certain group of people, it just kind of like, you know, put on you. But I was always um, non, I didn't like mainstream. I didn't like to do what everybody else was doing. So bringing new treatments to life was just up my alley. And around the same time, I had problems with my own skin. I was a very young doctor and um, often in the surgery room and my skin was dry. I had black hats. I had to go and see a facialist every three weeks and I didn't like it because I also, I tried every product on this market to try to fix my skin and nothing helped me. And I was so disappointed in that industry, in that market. And I thought, you know what, I, I, I make my own cream. If you can't help me, I make my own cream. So I um, created a cream with my pharmacist and I used like ingredients my grandma in the pharmacy has used. And she said, you know, you need to put this in there and this in there and this in there. So we made this amazing base cream. I added the proteins, the anti-inflammatory proteins from my blood. And I healed my skin overnight, literally. My skin was good. I was happy. And my patients were, you know, getting hooked on that cream. So my other patients, my, my, my aesthetic patients, everybody became like obsessed with that cream. And they said, Dr. Sturm, what, what's the routine? What cleanser should I use? What, you know, what, what is it? And I couldn't recommend anything. So I said, okay, I do it for you. I make some products. So this is how I started. And still not thinking this would be like, you know, I would have like a space in the beauty industry. It was just for my patients. Yeah. And then slowly, slowly more patients were asking for it. Then I had, I was overwhelmed with distribution because I still was a clinic, you know, I wasn't a fulfillment center for products. So I asked Meta Porte if they kindly would take me on their site. And for some miracle reason, they took me and it was, oh my God, that was groundbreaking to me because you you have to think this is over 11 years ago. 
nobody was selling beauty online. Nobody was. And people would say, you cannot sell beauty online. You know, people have to try the products. They say, don't worry. My patients already know my products. That will work out. No problem. So we went on Netta Porte. And from there, all those retailers came to me and said, can we carry your products? I mean, like, it wasn't designed to become like what it is today, um, but it just happened. <laughs> wow. You know, you really were... You know, you mentioned so many things that really were ahead of their time. PRP is just, you know, it's it's something that everybody knows about now, but 20 years ago would have sounded like, is, oh, you have to put blood on your face or, you know, I know that's just not exactly how it works, but still, I mean, that must have been mind blowing for people. Sometimes people say, is the, green, is the cream red and how it is look? You know, you don't, by the way, the picture of Kim Kardashian with her blood face was 2011. I created it 2003. So you have to think that was, you know, nine years later that it came out, you know? Um, so I was super ahead of the time at, at, at the time. And, you know, that's with all the things I do. And, you know, when I started the blood fascia and the blood cream, you know, people were laughing at me, you know, especially doctors in my field and they're like uh, ha, ha. <laughs> you know today they copy exactly what i do but um that was also kind kind of irritating but it didn't it didn't make me you know being intimidated i was always like very strong in my belief that what i was doing was the right thing yeah uh that a little bit leads into the next question that I wanted to ask. What is your beauty and well-being philosophy? Uh, I always like to ask this question off the bat because I think it sets up the tone for what we're going to be talking about later. I think it's a lifestyle more than just a product or just a supplement or just one thing. It's um, like the way you 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 see your entire health and well-being and when i was 16 years old i changed my diet and super healthy and i have never changed back my diet is healthy i eat healthy food and i see where it comes from because that's the fuel for our body so whatever happens in our body gets directed by food um that's the one thing then i was always like you know interested in cutting edge science so when i created those products those skincare products at the time i mean like people would put in the in in, in products like apple stem cells caviar fish dna i mean like were like weird stuff they put into creams and i was like no 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 there there must be like you know really cutting edge science so i came across telomerase activation which harvard study says you know telomerase the fountain of youth enzyme which not only um, stops the aging process but also reverses it and they tested it on mice and that's what i put in all products i did supplements um with it you know everything i do is designed for well-being anti-inflammation bringing you know um inflammation levels down but also you know in enhancing our our cells to have quality um cell divisions you know long-term cell divisions um and you know that also implicates a good night's sleep for example you know, you have to get eight hours of sleep if you can. Uh, try to keep your cortisol, your stress hormone level low, you know, meditate or de-stress somehow. However you can do it, you can play golf, whatever it is, you know. Everything is skincare is what we say here. <laughs> it's a life, um, you know, how you how you see life, you know. If you smoke, take drugs, um, um, be drunk all the time. Obviously, that's not a good outlook for a good you know, health situation. That doesn't mean I don't drink. It doesn't mean that, I, I mean, I'm not taking drugs, but, you know, it doesn't mean that I, uh, you know, it's everything in moderation. I completely agree. Uh, you know, you obviously have mentioned inflammation a few times, and that is kind of the core of the conversation that I wanted to ask or talk to you about today, just because, you know, you are such an expert in this field and you really pioneered uh, a lot of how we approach inflammation in skincare. Um, and, you know, so I, I want to dive in a little bit deeper onto this topic with you. And I feel like now is a good time to start. I want to lay a little bit of groundwork for folks. I, I think that at this point, we do have a pretty good understanding that, you know, inflammation uh, 
damages the skin when it's chronic and prolonged. And, you know, one thing that we definitely want to do is working on managing it. But let's pretend that, you know, you and I don't have that understanding. Let's pretend, you know, we are talking to people who who are kind of hearing this for the first time. So like, what what is your argument and what is your statement on on inflammation and the skin? Like, why is this something that we should be paying attention to? Actually, you said it really perfectly. I'm very impressed with uh, with your knowledge. So um, let's let's define what inflammation is. Inflammation is actually needed because it's an immune response and, you know, engages our um, police of our body to fight viruses, bacteria, etc. So we have to have inflammation or the ability to have inflammation. But if the stressors are too big and our inflammation level becomes too high on a prolonged basis, um, it destructs tissue, it causes chronic diseases, autoimmune diseases, and regarding skin, all kinds of things we don't like from, from, from eczema, rosacea, breakouts, aging, um, you name it, everything we don't like, even pigmentation issues is caused by inflammation. So everything we don't like, where does inflammation come from? So that can come from our diet. Yeah, that can come from stresses from outside, pollution, sun, um, AGV light from our phones, from our screens. It can come from stress. It can come from no sleep. So there, and it can come from skincare products, actually. So whatever you put on your skin can cause inflammation. Yeah. So we have to keep that in mind as well. Um, I think we just have to figure out how to keep inflammation under control and we can do this with a good night's sleep we can do it with distressing it can do it with a healthy diet we can do it with um using anti-inflammatory skincare product and now we can say what are inflammatory ingredients in skincare number one i would say retinol and retinol and retinoids you know and retin-a so there's like one big category which is loved but cause causes inflammation and the destruction of our skin same with glycolic hydroquinone acid yields, like all these um, ingredients which make your skin red and inflamed and dry and like you know um, sensitive that is um, inflammation right there yeah so you know we talk about this idea that we we need inflammation in the body and it's a natural response in the body and it's something that our body is going to do regardless. But, you know, we want to be able to manage it long term. What is that balance? And what are, you know, like, how do you know that you're in that balance of you have that inflammation response, but you're not going overboard? I I think it's a topic that I find deeply fascinating. I think, you know, if you, you know, you can listen to your body, you can do lab work, you can check your inflammation level. And I think, you know, if, if you, you know, feel overly tired, if you feel like loaded, if you feel certain, you know, things which takes your energy level out, you can, it's, it's, it's good to check your inflammation level as well. You know, um, I think, you know, everybody, I know my body super well. So if something is off, I know, you know, if you go on an stressful lifestyle you know you fly around the world you eat crazy stuff you have no sleep you basically you know you have to be social you have to drink wine every night that is quite an inflammatory lifestyle and most likely can cause inflammation sure uh you know to talk about the topical end of this too we obviously know that using products can affect it either for better or for worse uh, you mentioned some things that can trigger inflammation on the skin. So let's talk about those a little bit deeper. Uh, are, are you saying that, you know, these trigger inflammation in the sense that we don't want to use them at all? Or are you saying that to use them in a more like managed setting? You know, how do people, how should people approach those? First of all, if you want to use these ingredients, you use, you should use them in a managed situation, you know? The doctor who tells you about the side effects, about the possible, you know, after treatments, whatever it is, you know, so you have to understand what you're doing to your skin. And often, you know, the patient goes into a store and the patient can be 12 years old, 13 years old. I seen it. Yeah. And I had to stop them. They can buy everything. You know, you don't even have to come to 
st go to the store, you just click uh, online, you know, and it comes to your home and you start doing all these treatments and you think, oh, it needs to burn. It needs to, it needs to scrub my face or I need to be lobster red. I need to have all these sensation. No, only then it works. And you see, that's wrong. Our body has signals like pain to say, stop whatever you're doing in, in, with your body right now. It's a, it's a, it's a stop, 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 you know? And, you know, if we th look at our system, we have lots of organs, you know, imagine the skin is our biggest or organ and has like functions like liver has functions like hearts, you know, like our heart has functions like our kidney. Um, first and foremost, is it a protect it's a protection tool it's thermoregulation tool it's a sensational tool it has like lots of functions and why would we aggressively target our skin when we wouldn't do it to our heart we wouldn't do it to any other organ our skin is the skin bear we have a skin barrier that's the shield to the outside world if you use retin-a with no indication you know and one indication i would say is cystic acne yeah there's an indication for using retin-a but if you use it for anti-aging you basically take your skin barrier off you make your skin super vulnerable you know and you look like a lobster you know you you make yourself so vulnerable to all the stressors i just mentioned from sun pollution hgv light um the things you want to get rid of by using those ingredients you make actually worse because if you don't have the protection tool sun and pollution and hgv light target your skin even more aggressively and gives you more pigmentation issues give you more premature aging gives you more of everything we do not want makes your skin sensitive and i'm not just talking about retinol and glycolic let's go to vitamin c vitamin c is a really great ingredient you know as a supplement you do high dosage won't hurt you amazing good for our immune system on our skin high dosage will will destroy your skin barrier the same way high dosage of l-ascorbic acid bombarding your surface of the skin not a good idea low dosage of a way better formulated vitamin c as in our good c is a very good idea because it brings the vitamin c into the skin first and then it develops all the beautiful characteristics which helps us to build new collagen helps to um, catch free radical helps to brighten your skin i mean like there's so many good things about vitamin c but you need to know in which in which concentration topical or orally it, you know there needs to be an expert behind it it cannot just be a brand who says google marketing okay what is a trendy ingredient it's vitamin c everybody's searching for vitamin c okay let's take vitamin c in a high concentration put it in a product here you go it's nonsense yeah nonsense could not agree more and that's exactly what happened what is happening when we see all of these products on the market that are labeled as 20 percent vitamin c or you know xyz percent ahas and these are at these incredibly high concentrations that the the consumer doesn't know how to use terrible terrible i mean like i i would be scared to put that on my skin i would be scared i I, you know, and, you know, it's the thing, you know, people say, oh, yeah, we like vitamin C, but, you know, a little scary because it gives me like breakouts. And so, yeah, obviously, you know, that's why I created the good C. So you don't have, you don't have all these like negative sensations, but that's the industry. It's a marketing driven industry. And it goes for, you know, I mean, what does clean even mean? You know, well, what's the definition of clean? What's the definition of organic? What's the definition of non-toxic? What's the different? I mean, no, but there's no definition. You know, everybody makes up a definition. But, you know, to me, a high dosage vitamin C is toxic. Yeah. No, I think you're absolutely right. I think, I mean, one, anything is toxic and, you know, too much of anything is toxic. And, uh, and I think that we just need to be uh, a lot more honest. I went to a store. Um, last time I was in New York and it, 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 it says like something detox clean, whatever. And I just, you know, I was curious. I went in and I looked at, you know, at the brands they were carrying and I was just like, you know, wh what is the qualification for a brand to go in there? You know? And, and I said, you know what? Yeah. What, what is the qualification for a brand? Yeah. This is all clean products. I said, yeah. What, what does clean mean? Um, it's non-toxic. I said, but you have acid peels this is not your store i said oh I'm, I'm sorry you know 
I like, you know, I was just like, I wanted just to get some information because it's so confusing. Clean, toxic, acid peels. I mean, like, this doesn't go together, you know? It's like, I, I don't get it. I know, I know. The, the world of clean beauty has gotten very messy <laughs> and very confusing. And I, you know, it's something that we talk a lot on this podcast because it's important to kind of like suss through the nuances of all of this stuff. So, you know, the user can, and, and, and the beauty fan can use this stuff more intelligently because it is really, really confusing for them. And you can do a lot of damage to your skin. I, I want to talk about what you should be using instead. Um, You know, obviously you said that if you have acne, you can talk to your, uh, your dermatologist about using retinol. It's not that those stuff are off limits, but there are smarter ways to use it. Now let's just talk about the people with like generally like healthy skin. These are people who are, you know, maybe they are interested in um, preventative aging measures. Maybe they're like me, they're in their 30s, they're kind of at that time in their life where they're like, you know, I want to pay attention. I'm getting some fine lines. I have some pigmentation issues. What can I do? You know, what what should my routine start to look like? Very good question. One big thing I would say to everybody Dry or dehydrated skin is never an option. You need to have hydrated skin. This, you know, also trendy right now, this dewy look. And, you know, that is, you know, not with makeup, by the way, with skincare. That is, you know, you want hydration, not shininess. You want hydration, not oils on you. Hydration is different. And it goes deep and it protects your skin barrier and it keeps your skin cells hydrated so they can take off take on active ingredients that matters and i with my brand cracked the code of hydration because this is what i was looking for when i had problems with my dry skin and i couldn't find anything so hydration matters because i non-hydrated skin ages fast you get your finance you get so if you keep your areas hydrated you will prolong you know the phase where you don't feel like oh i need to get botox done or fillers or whatever so you keep keep those areas nicely hydrated that's one thing the second thing i would keep inflammation out yeah inflammation shouldn't be targeting our skin because it creates pigmentation it creates um premature aging yeah creates all those um things we don't want on our skin and then i would look in, in, into ingredient science and and that's what i did with my brand I, I, I checked. So if you have if you have rosacea, for example, you know, um, you need to calm your skin. I created the calming serum with ingredients to bring down rosacea. If we look at aging, we want to have ingredient which help, you know, catching free radicals like the good C, for example, or, you know, helping um, our skin with the collagen production or helping our skin um, with, you know, you know, peptides to 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 build collagen and elastin you know um and help with sagginess of the skin or exosomes that's my newest thing you know i i exosomes and growth factors which help to heal repair and upgrade your skin again because what happens when we age you know usually you know as a kid skin we have great skin cells they are all like soldiers in a really good you know position and when we age those cells go all over the place, you know, they're not like soldiers anymore and they have spaces in between so they don't communicate so well anymore. Then you have an uneven surface of the skin, you get wrinkles, etc. So what we need to do, we need to get those configuration as soldiers again. And um, I created an exosomatic serum. I don't know if you have seen it in the spa, but this is something to introduce exosomes, which help to communicate between the cells, growth factors to heal and repair and get those soldiers back into position. And that is a really great anti-aging tool. So this plus, you know, best ingredients um, for, you know, if you have hyperpigmentation, for example, um, I created a darker skin tone line, which helped to even out the skin tone or the better B niacinamide serum evens out the skin tone or a whole brightening line with ingredient signs to um, loosen the acclimation of the yellow and dark spots. It's not the um, overnight success, but it's a healing, anti-aging, hydrating, a beautiful way, anti-inflammatory way of, you know, um, getting these problems in, in control, you know? 
Yeah. Let's talk about the blood cream. I am sure people are would be fascinated to hear about this process. And, you know, we've kind of teased it up at the beginning with talking about PRP and vampire facials. But, uh, you know, for any folks listening who may not know exactly what we were talking about up there, let's, you know, let's talk about how you developed this, uh, this treatment. And, you know, subsequently, this coveted cream. Um, tell me about it. So, yeah, you know, I told you it, it was out of urge to create something which could heal my skin because I was so frustrated with what was on the market. And yeah, as a scientist, you know that anti-inflammatory proteins help with the inflammation cascade on your skin, plus hydration, um, plus nutrition gives you like, you know, what you need in theory for your skin. So I um, created a base cream with all those amazing ingredients, added the proteins from my blood and this healed my skin overnight and everybody loves it so it was um it was a project designed for me <laughs> and then it became like the thing <laughs> yeah but i mean you you take people's blood and put them into the cream you take people's blood in a, a special in a special syringe with little glass beads in it with an uneven surface. The unevenness of the surface basically simulates a wound. Yeah. So um, the cells come in, the white blood cells come into the syringe. They recognize these wound, you know, this uneven surface as a wound. They become adherent on those glass beads. And because they change their, um, their own body, it's a stimulus to produce these healing factors because they're in healing mode now collect those healing factors and then we spin the blood we take the red blood cells away and then we have the plasma which is white so your cream will never be red and yeah that's the trick best things in life are very simple yeah but then uh explain to us what happens when the plasma is then put back on the skin because i you know i think this is it's it's quite fascinating and i think that people would probably find it very interesting you know what what is happening like what are the plasma cells for and then what are they doing when they are reintroduced back into the skin it's just the anti it's it's called anti interleukin 1 it's a cytokine which basically keeps inflammation down or helps to bring inflammation down so whatever inflammation is going on on, on your skin whether it's from sun or whatever um, is you know helping with the anti-inflammatory proteins and the growth factors. They are also growth factors in the blood. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's so fascinating that you identified this, um, when you did and before, and before your time. And I think a little bit, of you know, I'd sorry to interrupt you, but I had this thought, you know, I'm not a dermatologist. So sometimes, you know, the mean people in Germany, she's not a real dermatologist. You know, actually it's good that I don't come out of a, you know, an area where, you know, every problem gets treated with, you know, cortisone or antibiotics or, you know, it's like, it's very um, aggressive in a way, you know, but uh, the dermatology now just created a new word, which is called corneotherapy, which is protecting your skin barrier. So they're going in the same direction now. Anyways, um, you know, I think it's nice to come from a different angle. I come from the anti-inflammatory medicine and the dermatology um because they want to you know you know get rid of certain problems faster they use antibiotics or cortisone or other stuff you know but then they do lasers or you know acid peels in the in the, they pretty much cause inflammation so they're just a different angle um and i think it's good to just you know get a different view on something which is very like normally very like um straight lines you know no i completely agree i think that um a lot of times in our space beauty professionals they they kind of get on the track of what they've always been told and we don't really think outside the box too much and you know so when when folks like yourself come into the space it can be quite jarring but ultimately you know you need a wide variety wide purview of opinions um, and insights because, you know, it makes for a better beauty industry. And I, you know, I think this inflammation example is quite, you know, is such a perfect example of that. 
I meet I meet a lot of dermatologists, by the way, who think the same way like me now. And I said, you know, I'm so glad you have this product. You know, instead of prescribing, you know, medication, I tell them to get the kids line, you know, for for the kids with eczema and stuff. Instead of, you know, telling them that, I tell them to use your clarifying line. So they basically almost see my ingredient science is a new way of medicine for certain problems. It's great. And it's also, you know, it's it's also a lifestyle like you have talked about earlier in this episode. Um, and we don't always have to jump straight to the medication, right? You know, you can you can start with smart, science-informed topicals. You can start with lifestyle changes. You can, you know, there are other things you can do. You don't have to jump straight to uh, these honestly, quite harsh uh, medications or treatments um, as the first line of defense. There are other things that you can incorporate. Um, and I think that's, I, I would like to think that that is where the field is heading. That's what I can gather from people that I talk to. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Same feeling like you. I think there is a there is a change, you know, there is a change to you know, do the right thing. And, you know, also because there are people like you and me who like to talk about it and educate and, you know, people are like, oh, okay, maybe I do my own little re research and I, you know, I, I rethink um, and, 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 and I do it differently, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think another thing um, that is perhaps feeding into this is, you know, in America, American beauty culture is very, um, quick results. It's very, you know, we, we want overnight treatments. We want harsh beauty is pain. You know, that is very much how we have been, um, brought up, uh, to believe in our birdie or beauty purview. And I, you know, I do think that, uh, other cultures obviously inform their own, uh, beauty insights. And I, I want to speak to you about, um, German beauty culture, because I do think that that, uh, plays a role in here. And I do think that some of the most innovative and exciting, um, uh, brands like yourself, uh, are informed by this very like science backed, innovative, uh, point of view. And, you know, I, I wanted to ask you like, what, what do you think your upbringing informed your view on beauty and, you know, your background informed that view on beauty? Do you think it had played a role? First of all, you know, it's very true about the American beauty culture, and that's what we have to educate on, that the quick fix and this burning and this, you know, aggressiveness should not take place on your skin. Um, you know, my upbringing, my mom was very, very, unfortunately, she's not with us anymore, but she was very natural. She, she looked beautiful, she had the most amazing skin, she wouldn't wear makeup, just like very natural beauty. And... Um, you know, in Germany, I think we're very like, we are not jumping into the world of assets. You know, we're like, oh no, let's see, let's see. I'm not sure. So we are a little more, um, little more, you know, distanced and, you know, we want to check it out. We want to see what this is. We want to do our study. It's, and, and I think the, the idea of beauty, I mean, like right now, the world mixes anyway, it's all global and, you know, also the cultures mixed together, but the main, like the very conservative German woman is very like um, careful and doesn't jump on new brands. She's using a brand for hundred years or something, you know, it's like um, very stable, but obviously, uh, you know, the next generation, they want to try out everything. You know, my science background, and I cannot speak for any other um, German brands because you know, I come from a scientific background. I didn't plan on doing um, skincare products that just happened um, by chance and by what happened in 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 my medical career, and so it wasn't it wasn't planned. I think you know, lots of beauty brands are planned around marketing and you know, um, making money or whatever. So I think you know the the first and foremost, I think. You know, to have like a scientific background really matters to 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 the products. I think. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, I want to ask about your favorite in-office treatments or you know spa treatments. I had the pleasure of uh, 
going to your most recent New York spa um, on the Upper East Side. I went to that a few days ago. I, it was so, so delightful. Um, so I want to ask you about, you know, what, what you love for spa treatments and what you're excited about. I'm the last person who gets um, spa treatments and facials. I had the big pleasure of having a facial yesterday and I wanted an exosomatic facial because I always wanted to do the most cutting edge and um, sometimes just good to get like a little bit of, um, you know, the, 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 the newest cutting edge ingredients into your skin. So I, I, I'm obsessed with the exosomes as you can can figure it out from my talking. So I also get exosome IV drips. I, I, I do a lot with exosomes and my exosomatic line i'm excited about about the exosomatic facials i'm excited about that's to me next generation skincare so next time you come do the exosomatic facial done you've convinced me <laughs> um so this is a fun question that i've started asking people um and it's a uh, what is your beauty hot take? And, you know, this is something that is a, a strong opinion that you hold that maybe is a little counterculture to, to the mainstream beauty uh, way of thinking. I, I feel like you probably have a few, and we've certainly talked about a few on this episode, but I want to give you airtime to see if there's anything else you want to, uh, you want to say as your beauty hot take. I looked at this, that is funny, you know, because you know, because I come from this different angle, I, I was challenging the beauty industry. And when I was not, when I didn't have such a voice and it was smaller, you know, people tried to stop me <laughs> from talking about it. You know, they were like quite, a, you know, I mean, like lots of crazy stuff happened to me during this time. And I was not, you know, I like to do the things I believe in and not, not do the things people want me to do or I, I, I don't want to fit in a box just because the box is more convenient. I, I like to go the stony way if I have to, you know, even if it, you know, you know, breaks my legs along the way. But I, I, I truly go after my belief. And when I say, you know, acid peels cause inflammation, that's one thing, you know, where where I'm really against, you know, the, the mainstream beauty industry for sure. Um and I, I won't change my opinion. And another opinion I have is like, you know, if you decide for a beauty brand, have that beauty brand, try out that beauty brand because, you know, you know, me as a doctor or other brands as doctor, scientists or whoever they are, they have an idea about the ingredients they put together for their, for, for whatever purpose, you know? And so if you want to try Storm, try it together, even if it's just two, three products, you don't have to have like the whole thing. Just have a hyaluronic serum, your face cream. You will have a skin transformation. I, I promise you, you can expect this from my product. If you use it alone with no other brands, it needs to have that right to just, and I promise you, you will have a skin, care tra a skin transformation. I know you can expect this from my product. Yeah. And, you know, I actually think that's a really good point to talk about using um, collections and brands together because i think that we are at this point in time in a beauty uh culture and a that encourages you know trying this trying that pulling this from this you know adding this product from that brand and um you forget or at least the consumer maybe doesn't realize that these collections are built to complement each other and work together and there's really there's real value and trusting in the system um, rather than, you know, thinking that if you pull together, if you pick and choose all these different products, that somehow you're going to get a similar result. And when in fact, like you would have been better off trusting the system from the get-go. Yeah. I think that's really, uh, that's a good hot take. I like that one. Okay. So the last thing that I always talk about with my guests is their own routine. Um, so let's, let's start with your skincare routine. What do you, you use morning and night? So I'm not a beauty junkie, but I'm obsessed with my products, <laughs> so, but I'm also like quick and out the door. My little one takes more time in, in the bathroom than me. Um, so in the morning often, because I'm also in, in the alt high altitude, 
you know, first thing I do, I put my face mask on. I love my face mask, super hydrating, but also gives me like, you know, um, the fresh start and, and calms my skin and just, I love it. So I put it on in the morning. I have my coffee, I bring pepper to school. Then I just, I just start rubbing it off. I really rub it off my skin and then I'm um, taking a shower. I have, and then I use my hyaluronic serum and my face cream. And um, that could be it, you know, I'm like minimal, but very effective. And I would never not use my hyaluronic serum and I would never not use my face cream. These two products are always, always mandatory, but, um, you know, all the rest, I can just be a little lazy today, you know. And then every night I use the super anti-aging serum and I use my exosomatic serum. And I also love my Better B. I'm obsessed with the Better B. I'm obsessed with my night cream. In the night, I also mostly used my my eye cream. Um, yeah, and my lip balm is always with me. Glow drops before our call. Glow drops, you know. Oh, I love my glow drops so much. I mean, I use all my products. My body cream. Then, you know, I'm I'm such a maniac about, you know, what's important for our body. And, you know, I create everything I need in my bathroom. So I have... Now my shampoo, conditioner, hair mask, because the scalp also is like a sponge and takes on all this shit we put on our hair, all this shit, whatever it is. I mean, like shampoos, you cannot even know what's in there from microplastic, silicone, sulfates, tensile. It's bad, bad, bad. So I started only using my shampoo. It's such a game changer. And everybody, this is a product you don't know that you need it until you have it. It's life changing. But you know what? It's, I, I created it. Um, it's there. Then my body wash, my body wash. I don't use, I don't use shower gel. I need to have the right ingredients. I have a V wash for the, um, female genitals because this pH is very, very, very acidic. It's, um, 3.5. It's very acidic. And if we use a soap or a shower gel, very alkaline, you change the pH and then your bacteria are not the right ones there anymore. And then you get UTIs and then you get all this candida, you get all those things you know and so it makes a difference what you use on your body it makes a difference not just for your face but for every little bits and parts of your system your body i completely agree i mean i am the biggest advocate of body care it is so so important your skin is skin everywhere um the last question i have is your well-being must-haves i said earlier that i believe everything is skincare, and so i believe what you eat you know, your sleep hygiene, how you move, your mental health, those are all skincare. So you don't have to get into your whole routine, but do you have any, you know, must have favorites that are a core part of your well being rituals? Like skincare. Oh, no, I just mean like, um, I, I say everything is skincare, like how much you sleep is skincare, how, you know, how much you eat is skincare, it's all connected. Uh, so the last question I always ask is, you know, how, how do you take care of yourself? I also what I do, uh, I believe in resonances. So I do resonance therapy. I do electromagnetic. I have electromagnetic mat here. I have it right here. Um, you know, I believe in like you know that, you know, walking barefoot on the ground. You know, similar to the effects of electromagnetic mat. We always need to, you know, be like grounded in a way. You know, like. It's just so healthy to not just follow the flow of like, you know, the school medicine, but maybe also look around the corner. And, you know, there is, is a great book, The Law of Resonances, that I would recommend um, to read. Or Your Mindfulness and, you know, The Power of Words is a great book. You know, how we, whatever we, you know, bring out of our minds, but also keep in our minds, you know, the words really matter. And it can direct our life. Um, I do a bunch of things. Red light therapy, really good. You know, and don't buy these weird masks. Get a real proper red light. They have a red light room, whatever. Take the red light. It's so fantastic for you. Yeah. And then, you know, another thing I like is, you know, doing like 20 second hugs, 10 a day. Anyone you like, anyone, hug them 20 seconds. It's life-changing, life-changing. It's nice. Well, I think that's a pretty good note to end on. I think that's a pretty good habit to, for people to adopt. 
uh, I just wanted to say thank you again for joining me. This was such a delightful conversation. And, you know, you are such an icon in the space for a reason. And so, you know, I am so flattered to have you here and to chat with you about all your, you know, amazing work and contributions to to the beauty industry. Thank you. I'm so grateful for you to have me um, on your podcast. And, you know, I'm grateful that we can share certain, you know, opinions and philosophy and you know help people to make up or make better choices for themselves yeah i agree well thank you again